The next texture we're going to be taking a look at is a brick texture. As you can see here, uh, we have a reference photograph of a, a nice little section of brick on a wall. Uh, now brick can be sort of difficult to work with uh, depending on how good your original photograph is. In this case we have a very good, uh, mostly non-distorted uh, brick photograph, although there are a few things we have to compensate for. Uh, one major thing about brick, at least old brick, uh, actually kind of works with any of them, is it's not always perfectly straight. Uh, we can see that the brick lines kind of go up and down throughout certain areas, and it can be difficult to match up the certain areas of the brick. Uh, another major thing, especially when we're working with straight lines like this, is the fact that we have lens distortion. And now the lens distortion in this case is not very large, because this is mostly taken with more of a zoom. Uh, from far away zoomed into the to the actual brick and then the photo was taken, uh, which if you're going to be taking photos for textures, it's highly recommended that when you're doing a brick texture that you do not use a wide angle lens and that you zoom in as much as you can uh, so that you have a lot less distortion on the edges when it comes to more of a fisheye look. Uh, we are going to compensate for that immediately and just go up to Filter, Distort, Lens Correction. And this is a nice little plugin. Uh, fixing most of your major uh, lens errors or distortion, uh, even fringe on certain areas. It's a very uh, versatile plugin, uh, so it's nice to have. Uh, but what we're going to do is use our remove distortion, which is one of the major uh, features of this. And All we really have to do is take this top bar and we're going to move that over. And that brought us to a plus one. And we really don't even need that much, so I'm going to just manually type in plus 0.5. And you can see that it actually kind of a dramatic effect uh, because we can even go very far with this uh, in each direction and depending on how much lens distortion you have uh, you might even need to go that far in or out uh, but I'm going to set this to 0.5 which will be all we need and then we can go ahead and click OK and that filter will apply. Now of course this adds a tiny little bit of transparency to the edges that's not going to be a problem. Uh, one thing this also allowed us to do is uh, make this background layer that we had uh, already a uh, finished layer uh, so that we can work with it. One thing I want to do now before we uh, start sort of rotating this because our lines aren't lined up perfectly this picture wasn't taken uh, perfectly straight so we do need to rotate it just a little but I'm going to draw some guides and we want to make sure we have our ruler out for this because it's much easier and if you don't have your ruler you can go to view and then select rulers you can see this is with it turned off and then view rulers turned on. What we want to do is click in this ruler area up on top to create a horizontal guide. Click on it and hold down and we can see we have this uh, line already coming out and we can just match that up to one of these lines so that we can see uh, what's going to be straight and what's not. And we're just using these of course as guides. These do not affect the actual uh, image at all although they will save with it but not be displayed. So I'm just going to put one on top and I'm going to put one on bottom. And that's just for our horizontal guides. And now I'm going to create two vertical guides, which we can do by selecting the left ruler. And just sort of put that in where we can see a bunch of lines lining up. Just as a reference, something nice to have, a little extra, so we can kind of tell where certain things line up when we're rotating. Of course, since our bricks up and down aren't exactly perfect, we'll have to kind of eyeball it as much as we can. I'm going to go to our rectangular uh, marquee tool and uh, our selection tool and just right mouse click and go to free transform. And now we're going to edit uh, along the outside. So we want to click outside in the gray area so that we can rotate. And this particular image does not need a lot of rotation. But we want to make sure we're matching up is each one of these uh, sort of the where the mortar is in between the brick, uh, matching that up on both sides all throughout the image. Uh, except for some parts right here you can see it kind of goes down. That's not going to be a big deal. We can always fix that. We just want to get it as close as we possibly can because actually we'll be removing some of the brick so that we have a perfect seamless texture. But that looks good right there. And hit enter and now we can clear out our guides. And The easiest way to do that, uh, there's actually two ways. One is you can select the move tool, grab your uh, guide, and then drag it off into the ruler. Uh, but the easier way is just to go up to view 
and clear guides and that way we can clear out all of our guides. Okay, now what we want to do is crop out a part of our image because we are going to need to crop this obviously because we have certain uh, areas that show up that do not need to be in there or that uh, overlap certain part of the brick and it won't line up correctly. So we're going to grab our crop tool and I'm just going to draw this out right now and then start dragging in certain areas. Uh, for the top we want to have a little bit of that sort of mortar in there and then for the bottom uh, since it's gonna not going to line up correctly we're actually missing uh, some of those mortar pieces in there I'm going to go up a level but when I go up a level what's going to happen is we're out of pattern uh, out of sequence with our bricks if you notice our line right here we also have that same line down here so when we pile up next to each other the bricks are going to look like they're laid on top without any sort of skewing and uh, if you want to create a pattern that way you can do that or if we can just go up to the next brick, brick level which isn't going to be a problem and now when we take the horizontal into effect we can either uh, do that now or a little bit later another thing I want to do is bring this up just above the mortar line so that we can use the existing mortar line up here to sort of blend that together and now we have to take a look at the right and we want to make sure we're not going along any of these lines uh, because that can present certain problems that we don't want to uh, really get into and we need to go halfway through the brick so that it's matching up correctly and the best place to do it uh, if we just take a look here we can see where our bricks end and where they start and we might even have to go a little bit halfway through but I want to go about right there and then kind of leave off right here and that should give us enough space on each side and we just want to cut off the same amount using some of the smaller pieces that we can see in here as a reference so we're cutting off this small little bit on this side and that will make up we'll maybe be able to make up for that with this large area right here so we want to cut off a little on this side and then have a little bit on this side so that will line up a little bit better and that looks like it should be good right there so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and now we can start uh, offsetting this texture and working with the clone stamp tool and start removing certain uh, artifacts within the actual uh, texture here or picture. So I'm going to go up to filter, other, offset and right now I'm not going to worry about the vertical I'm going to set that to zero because we want to work with our horizontal and our vertical separately uh, so that we can do a little bit more with it and this will also allow us to double check and make sure that our lines are uh, lined up good enough to make a texture out of it. And we'll just zoom in and take a look and just make sure that everything looks fairly decent. Uh, we can see that some of these areas right here aren't quite lined up right. Uh, up here it is, down here it's off a little, it's off right there and we can notice we have sort of an overall mistake uh, so what I'm going to do is undo that offset or delete that history state and we are going to do a little bit of rotation and sort of fix that so we'll pull a guide down uh, once again and it's just like it looks like it wasn't lined up correctly enough and because this left side uh, we had that side a little bit higher than our right side we need to compensate for that so we're going to right mouse click go to free transform we also need to uh, maybe crop this again so actually I'm going to delete the crop go back and fix this before we actually cropped it so maybe you want to do that offset ahead of time but it is difficult to tell until you actually do the crop so we want to go just a little bit of a change with it and since that right side was up higher or that left side was up higher we want to just bring it and lo rotate it uh, counterclockwise just one little step just so that we see this little tiny bit of pixelation uh, difference in that line and that should be good enough because uh, that will make a nice overall change hit enter and I'm going to remove our guide and then we'll go ahead and crop that again using our top line here going a little bit off on the bottom 
and then cutting off equal portions on the sides. And I'll bring that up just a little. And now I'm going to hit enter. And let's take a look and do that offset again. And you can access the last uh, tool that you had. Uh, in this case, we have our offset settings are saved uh, within this uh, top filter right here, which is Control F. We can hit to bring that up. So it just copies the last offset we did. Uh, we can see now they line up a lot better than they did before. Uh, right here, I mean, we still have a little bit of work that's going to be need to be done with it, but overall, the majority of the bricks match up now. And the, like I said before, this is one of the major problems with the brick is getting all that to line up. Another thing you'll notice too is we have some of these transparent areas up on top, and we could either crop that out or we can go ahead and just fill that in later. So I think I'm going to leave it, and we'll worry about that once we start working on the vertical because right now we just want to work on our horizontal part of the picture and just fix this middle line. Now for the most realistic result here, what we want to do is use the majority or the larger part that got cropped off and sort of bring that over so that we're getting a little bit of both sides. So I'm going to grab our uh, rubber stamp clone tool and I'm going to adjust our diameter to a little over 40 and our hardness should be around 38% for the specific texture. That really depends on how much uh, surface area you're working on. Uh, but I want to use the larger area because obviously I want the rock or the brick to all blend in the same color. But I don't want to have to take this little area right here and make that all in here. So we can just grab by holding down Alt and clicking uh, within this part of the brick. We can just move this over and fill that in. And now that brick is pretty much done. We'll just add a little bit to that mortar. And now we're going to do this right piece right here. And we're just going to be alternating uh, because of the way the bricks are, we can do that. Just back and forth, grabbing from certain sides, getting it to match up right. And we don't have to worry about too much consistency here. And now when we're working on uh, getting these unlevel areas, we just kind of want to go between. And we're going to grab a piece right here, making sure that our crosshair is in the center. And then we want to go in the middle right here and sort of add that. And that way we get this kind of step down. We also want to decrease the size of that and just kind of step it down going in the middle of where that problem is. And it's not going to be perfect, but as you can see when we zoom out to about 100%, it does look better than it did before, and, it, and at least it lines up for the most part. And now we're going to be grabbing from this side, and we notice we have more of a gray rock there. And if we have anything that sort of matches up a little bit better, we can grab from this brick on the left and sort of fill that in. We'll grab a little bit in there. And basically we just want to go left and right with it. We're going to fill in that gap right here. And then grab from this side, sort of blend that. And in some cases you can go from other sides of the rocks. Uh, but going left to right and alternating can help out uh, with the coloration, since there might be brick differences or the coloration differences. And this is kind of an easy way to sort of deal with that. We'll go a little bit smaller with our brush to take care of that diagonal going in between, making sure the crosshair is on the right area so we don't get these huge steps that we kind of have developing. And we can make it go a little bit rough since this is a very old brick and that won't be a problem. I'll undo that. And sometimes you can remove uh, large areas to make it blend in a little more if it doesn't seem that it's looking right because sometimes too uh, even though it's the actual brick itself like this line right here might not look right to you you can kind of remove that because we want it to look real and sometimes what's real doesn't look real and can look like it's been altered so you might need to uh, fix some of those problems and that's what we're doing now just going along this line and just fixing that up and we're not going to worry about really the coloration differences uh, with the 
a good enough hardness level, nice and low, then we're allowed to have a lot more blending between the two surfaces and it will match up a lot better. And this is coming along pretty well. We're almost done with the horizontal. We've just got three more rows to go. I'm going to grab from our left side now and fill in this whole area of the brick. And I'm all clicking to grab certain areas. I'm doing it rather quickly because I've got that thumb button on my mouse, which makes me do it a lot quicker and be more productive about it. But I'm just going from certain areas and just grabbing uh, whatever looks like it would fit in best, whatever the coloration would be best in that area. And we'll grab this brick and we want to pretty much remove this whole section right here just because uh, one, the coloration, and two, because the fact that it's too unique. And we want to remove some of the more obvious stuff from the scene, or from our texture here. And we grabbed a little bit too much there. But I'll show you just more in a sec how much more we actually need to remove. Uh, this hole right here we'll want to get rid of. So we'll just remove that. This slit right here we'll remove. And you just want to go through and kind of remove the areas that are obviously going to show up uh, when they're repeated. And it'll be obvious that we are using the same thing over and over. And like I said before with uh, some of the other textures, we can't eliminate tiling. Tiling is going to happen, but we can of course reduce the tiling effect. And that can be done by removing obvious really light areas, like down there, uh, where we have large changes in contrast, those should be removed. And like I said, with these holes that we have in here, those are going to show up and sort of dominate the texture, and we don't want that happening, especially with this hole right here. We'll go ahead and remove that. And then we have this rock kind of shoved in here between the, where the mortar is between the bricks. And we can just remove that by grabbing uh, from another set of bricks. And there's also another hole over here, so we'll remove that one as well. Because those are things that are just going to really show up when we're trying to uh, repeat this texture over a, a large area. Now if you're just using a small area, then you're going to want to keep uh, those little accents in there because they increase the realism. Uh, but if you want to be using this as a seamless texture and tiling it uh, across a larger object, then of course you'll want to get rid of anything that's going to look like it's a major part of tiling. And you can go in uh, a lot more and do a lot more work with that. I'm just going to go that far and get rid of the more obvious stuff. Uh, up here is the last thing I'm really going to do is just kind of change that and this over here. But now we can take a look at our vertical because now our horizontal is done and it looks really good. Uh, like I said, we have some of these changes in the brick where it's kind of going up a little. Uh, but that happens uh, with real brick. We'll have changes in different sizes and it's going to be the best way to line up this specific texture because brick is hard to make seamless textures out of when you're using photographs, especially if the photograph wasn't taken perfect, and it'll never be taken perfect because, uh, of course, these objects in real life are not perfect. I'll go ahead and zoom out here. And now we're going to take a look at uh, cropping the vertical if it needs to be uh, changed at all. But that looks like it should be all right. We should be able to blend that in uh, nicely. There'll just be a, a seam along the top, so we'll go ahead and do an offset. And we don't need to worry about the horizontal is set right now, but since that's finished and we don't have a set specific texture or anything uh, sort of lining up with that, that'll be fine if we just leave it or set it pretty much wherever we want. What we want to take a look at is our vertical. And we can see that's lined up really nicely, even though we have uh, obviously some a seam to get rid of and uh, this transparency. But since we went with the mortar on this side and a little bit of the brick and then cut off the mortar on the top, uh, we're able to work with that a lot easier because now we don't have uh, two mortars lining up or uh, just going through the mortar halfway, which can be a problem sometime because it's not straight. Uh, but all we really have to do is just zoom in here 
and we'll get as close to that seam as we can working with a little bit of a smaller brush and then just going in here and removing the seam carrying down our lines if we need to but the vertical is usually uh, a more simple or in this case sorry the horizontal is uh, a lot simpler than doing the vertical and now we can just remove that transparency area we had and we have a nice area to blend with because like I said we have a little bit of that brick left over from the other side and this stuff will just carry over and the coloration seems to match up really well too so do we don't really need to make any changes for that and we don't want to copy any obvious stuff we can remove that as well and for this we just want to match it up as best we can I'll grab from this line and just kind of move it over and it's not going to be perfect uh, you don't want to spend too much time working on your texture because a lot of this stuff won't be obvious and will not show up you just want to get rid of your more obvious seams and your more obvious color changes uh, the actual object itself in this case is very decrepit very old it's not going to matter if it doesn't look right because it already doesn't look right so that's nothing to really worry about we'll just move that down go on this side remove the rest of that seam I only got just a little tiny bit left let's go right up to the edge and I'm going to remove this area because it looks kind of weird and now we can zoom out and set our offset to whatever it is we want take a look and see that everything is lined up perfectly that we have no seams and now we've created a perfectly seamless texture both horizontal and vertical uh, one thing you might take note of is the fact that our coloration might be a little bit different and we can see uh, exactly where the top of the image used to be and where the new part is by looking at this line right here we can tell uh, these are a lot darker bricks than they are down here now what we could do is actually change the color of the bricks but if we wanted to we could also uh, copy some of these bricks down so if I could grab uh, the clone stamp tool and I'm going to select this brick right here and just replace it or replace this one down here with the one up there and that way we get our color blending a little bit better within these bricks so we don't have any major changes and doesn't look like it came from a photograph and then of course we'll want to remove anything that makes it look exactly like the other brick changing some of the coloration and some of those obvious artifacts move out just a little and now we have a dark brick down here uh, we could replace one right here one down here and just kinda go back and forth with that maybe make a lighter brick uh, up in this darker area as well to kinda balance that out we'll grab this brick right here select in the center and then go in the center of another brick and just kind of go down just so that the color changes aren't so dramatic between the sets of bricks we can have it varied and you can go about and do this as much as you want and the more you do it uh, the less tiling you will have in the overall texture and the less changes you will have between uh, the light areas and the dark areas but this is pretty much our finished texture or at least our finished color map we could offset that if we want to uh, one thing I am gonna do is make sure that we don't have any seams on the edges or any of the mortar lines on the edges and you'll see why I'm doing that in a minute but mostly it's because of our bump map that we're gonna be creating or our secondary bump map we'll be creating so I just want to move that in and click OK alright so now we have our color map we can adjust the uh, overall levels if we want to hit control L and we're gonna bring that top our right slider in bring our left slider in just a little and then move our middle slider to the right which will give us a nice contrast on these brick uh, bricks so they don't look so washed out now our color map is finished and we're gonna move on to our bump maps and in this case we want to create two bump maps uh, one to pick up all the subtle 
uh, tiny little bits we have in here, all this tiny little bump, and then one to really uh, make an inset inside uh, in between the bricks so that it really goes in, and we definitely want to work on that. Another thing you might want to take into consideration is the fact that we have these harsh shadows on our color map, and of course we can remove those if we want, uh, because depending on the lighting situation, if you're going to have an overcast scene, uh, you don't want to have these harsh shadows in your texture because it wouldn't look right. So what we can really do is just grab sections of the brick, or in between the brick, where there's not much shadow, or uh, no shadow at all, like in some of the areas, and just sort of remove some of these larger shadow areas, and that'll help out with the look of your overall texture. I'm going to leave them uh, where they are right now, just for the sake of the tutorial, because that can take some time to really move the, remove those. But just use your clone stamp tool. Uh, we could s select from right here and kind of replace this area up on top so that we don't have the large shadow gaps. But the, in this case, they'll actually come in handy for our bump map. So the first thing I'm going to do is copy our layer, bring it down to the bottom right, uh, second button in, and now we have our copy. And then I'm going to create one more copy. This first one, what I'm going to do is use a filter. We go to Filter, Other, High Pass. Now with High Pass, we can remove uh, all of our contrast variations where we have some dark bricks and some light bricks. This will remove that entirely and give us a nice grayscale look uh, that we're kind of going for. And of course, you can adjust this as much as you want. And you can see the more we bring it to the right, the more of these uh, areas we get that are lighter and darker. And this is also a good way to change the color of the brick if you want. It's kind of look kind of neat like that. So you have an entirely different type of brick. But I'm going to bring this down to a lower amount so that we're just getting these lines okay, just barely showing up. Just to use them as a reference, but we still have uh, some of this little stuff in here. So I'll actually move that up just a little and click OK. And we'll work on that in just a sec a little bit more. Uh, the second layer that we have here, I'm going to go to Image, Adjustment, Gradient Map, and with our default selected, the top one, uh, making sure Reverse is not on, and click OK. And now this is going to be uh, pretty much one of our secondary maps, or our primary map, where we can uh, make multiple bump maps and uh, layer it in our 3D application. And this way we get a lot more of the detail in there uh, that we have. And if you want to, uh, you could do a better high pass on this one. You can go to Filter, Other, High Pass, and increase that so that it's more of an overall blending. So we don't have any, so many dips. Because if we take a look at the difference, now we have a more overall uh, color, which we should have, because we're not going to have bricks sticking out uh, in this specific texture. Although that is a good way to do it if you want to have that sort of look. But that uh, is not dependent on our color in this case. We don't want our color to affect the bump. Now the way we're going to work on this other bump map is we want to define our mortar lines. And what we're going to do is go to Image Adjustment Levels and we want to increase the color of this to make it a lot brighter. So it's more of a white or at least closer to a white and that way we're going to use black to fill in uh, the rest of these lines and click OK. And if you want to, you can work with just a, a plain gray or white background and put black in there since we're going to be blending it together uh, with this map right here. Uh, but I'm going to work with it this way because we have a it's a lot easier to tell kind of what's going on within the image. So I'm going to create one more layer, a new layer. The name doesn't really matter. Select our brush tool and make sure that we have black. So we want to make sure that our RGB values are 0, 0, 0. Click OK. And we want to set our brush to sort of match the distance in these mortar lines. At least for the most part. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, but in this case, we can set it to about 30. And we want our hardness, uh, this to be a little bit harder. So we're going to go around 75% hardness. And just start painting in these lines. and you just want to kind of move around in between the bricks just filling that in because this is going to give us a very dramatic bump uh, with our brick 
that's going to look a lot nicer when we actually have all our textures on here. So first I'm just going to do all these horizontal lines uh, just in between here, making sure I go in and out, up and down, uh, matching up with the brick. Right here it's not quite perfect, I could always go back and edit that. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that really quick. And now we have all the horizontal lines done. And another thing I want to note is make sure that you go all the way uh, to the edges and that you don't change the brush, shot, brush size or at least match it up when you're doing the edges uh, so that you start out with 30 on one edge and end up with 30 on the other because of course these are going to need to match up. And we will do, be doing another offset uh, to really sort of fix those lines if they're not perfect uh, because of course we don't want our bump map to be off. Uh, but one of the reasons we also offset it is so we don't have any as mortar seams uh, mortar lines on the seams on the edges so that it's easier to create this bump map and now I'm going to work, start working on the vertical lines uh, the in-between bricks but we don't want to do this bottom and top part just yet because we are going to be offsetting our texture and we don't want to have to uh, create that many uh, lines that aren't going to match up so just come in here and then just start creating uh, your vertical lines and just using your little bit of the texture before to kind of tell exactly uh, where they're supposed to go. And I know this looks very crude, uh, but in actuality this will look perfect with our texture because this is not going to be an extremely dominant bump map. Because when we have our other bump map that we created with this, it'll look really good and we don't have to worry about this looking so flat. And another thing, depending on how much time you create, you can really go in there and make it a little more uh, interesting kind of curve out these edges and round them out if you want to as you can see we can do around here uh, I'm not gonna worry about that right now I don't want to spend too much time on this but it is something you can do to make it look a bit more realistic and if this is hard for you to tell uh, exactly where these lines are I can tell because they're pretty they're pretty uh, noticeable uh, but if you're having a hard time seeing it, you can always change the opacity of this uh, layer underneath so that we can see those lines a little bit better. I'm not really having a hard time seeing them but if you want you could grab that other layer bring down the opacity and then we can really see where those lines are at and where we need to draw them and making sure you have the right layer selected when you're going back and painting and just going through and I'll just go ahead and finish the rest of this up and now we want to offset this and finish up the rest of these lines and also correct uh, any mistakes that we made with the horizontal lines. So what I'm going to do is go to Filter, Other, Offset, and just sort of find the area where we had our seam, which looks like right here because we can see that's off just a little. We'll have to make some adjustments. And then we want to adjust our vertical so that we can see the rest of this and go ahead and click OK and before we do anything else now we have to do this offset on all of the other layers so we'll select our layer down from that hit control F and it'll automatically remember our last filter control F on the next one and control F on the color mat so now all of uh, our different layers are all matched up and all of our different textures and we just want to go in here and sort of fix uh, anything that doesn't match up right. If you need to remove some areas, you can delete something if you want. It really depends on how good you want it to look. Uh, if they really don't match up well, you could just delete the whole area and go through it again. So we'll go ahead and do that for this part right here. Just make it a little bit bigger delete that, grab our brush, start out, and then fix that. For the smaller stuff you don't really need to worry about that too much unless you feel that you need to. And now we want to fill in the rest of these vertical lines just in the center. Okay, and now we're finished with that. So we'll bring our opacity back up and select our top layer 
hit control E and merge that down so now we have that as a specific mat. And now I'll go ahead and save these out. Our two different bump maps and our color map. And if we could also create a diffuse map if you want. So we can go ahead and copy that color map, go to image, adjustment, uh, go to our gradient map, and click OK. And now we have our diffusion map set up. So we'll save all these out and then take a look and see how they look within the 3D program.